Hey everybody, I am Sam, this is Way Too Late TV, welcome. As you can see, uh, this used to be Big Angry Plays, uh, I used to be Big Angry, I'm Sam now, uh, just Sam. Uh, this is Way Too Late TV, as you can see up here, uh, the new Twitter account is Way the Number Too Late TV, uh, that will uh, have all sorts of uh, stream go live announcements. Uh, over here, uh, you can see the new... Um, Twitch, um, what's it called? URL, which is way too late TV, uh, which is all spelled out and everything. Uh, and, uh, that will, uh, get you right here to Twitch, uh, and way too late TV. It is called way too late TV because it is right now about 2.04 AM, uh, which is way too late for a lot of people, but not for me, not for my night owls. Thank you out there for watching Night Owls. Um, why the name change? Because uh, my good friend Pound of Flesh brought it to my attention. Um, I, I I was like one of the least angry people on Twitch. So... Big Angry didn't really fit. So, you know, I had Way Too Late TV on uh, YouTube and I got kind of grand grandparented in on the... Uh, name there because you have to have a hundred subscribers in order to uh, uh, change your URL there but I got in on the ground floor and got the fancy URL before they made you have a hundred subscribers so um, I can't change it so I may as well go with it sure um, anyway um, so this is now way too late TV I am your host Sam and uh, tonight we are going to be playing some Final Fantasy 13. I'm sorry, 14. Uh, 13 was a good game, but not uh, not what we're playing tonight. Final Fantasy 14. Uh, going to be playing patch 5.2 um, of the Shadowbringers expansion. Um, I am trying to get all set up for 5.3, which comes out on August the 11th, um, which is coming up here. It is the uh, what the heck day is it? 29th of uh, July right now. And um, yeah, uh, I have not actually done uh, patch 5.2 yet. I did 5.1 over the last two days. Uh, Would have done it in one, but uh, had my share of technical hiccups on day one of patch 5.1. Yes, thank you, Stream Elements. Thank you. Um, had my share of hiccups on day one, and that's all right. Um... But going to try and get through patch 5.2 tonight. Um, so without any further ado. Let's get going. Oh, I just got an IM. Okay. Let's get some actual uh, background music from the game going. All right, now then. Starting patch 5.2. We've got Alpha Node here. Starting patch 5.2, we've got Alpha Node. Let's see what he wants. Alpha Node wears a satisfied smile, seemingly content with the state of Yulemore. Yay! Truly, to see Kai Shear thus inspired by our actions is inspiring in itself. Yet, however much I may wish to stay and see what comes of his efforts here in Yulemore, we have matters of our own to attend to. Come, we should return to the Crystal Tower. Mayhap Beck Lug's studies have borne fruit in our absence. Just let my good friend, uh, Kana know that I'm streaming right now, if she'd like to watch. Wink, wink. 
watch. Alright, we're headed back to the Crystarium. Sure, good timing, just got out of tanking Holminster for her trust. <laughs> oh boy. And there she is, actually. Alright, let's see here. Probably going to be at the Dawson Gate. And it is. Excellent. Talk to the Crystarium Gatekeep. Hello, yes, you're a VIP. You were here that night when I uh, got um, uh, affiliate status. Or I got affiliate status unlocked. Can't quite do much with it, but... Um, yes, you are a VIP. You are one of my good, good friends, Kana. Yes, enter the ocular. I accidentally hit the button, so I didn't get to read that, but... I doubt it was important. Crystal Exarch. Welcome back. We are given to understand a new mayor has taken office in Yulmore. Indeed, our good friend Master Chai was elected by popular vote and, after some considerable soul-searching, chose to accept the post. It is a shame you weren't able to attend his inaugural speech, though I have no doubt you will see more of him in the future. But tell me, how fared you in preparing the White Aura site? Our work did not proceed quite as expected. In your absence, we had a frank discussion on the principles of soul transference and concluded at length that White Aura site was ill-suited for our purposes. But Ariange, did you not say that compared to the massy soul of an Asian, massy, the stone could house one of ours with ease? That I did, and armed as we are with backlogs in valuable insight, it would indeed prove a trifling matter. Were are we to disregard the invaluable link twixt mind and soul? A link which would, we did belatedly realize be weakened most perilously in the process of rendering our souls dormant, as Aurasite doth require. Thus, in the shedding of these fleshly simulacra, and the surfeit of aether which comprises them, would in all likelihood deprive us of our psyches as well. You kind of have to chew the scenery when you're doing Urjian Jay's voice. It would theoretically be possible to channel your minds into the Aura site instead, but we would be more than likely to sacrifice your souls in the process. Which is why we have abandoned that plan and instead devoted our time to finding a means by which mind and soul might be transported together. Then we are no closer to a solution than when we first began. It is a vexing conundrum indeed, but one for which the Crystal Exarch has po posited a most intriguing solution. When our discussions turned to the transference of memories and psyche, I could not help but be reminded of a technique with which I have personal experience. To explain, in the latter days of the Alagon Empire, the last of their kind devised a mean to pass on their blood and memories to my forebears. It is through these gifts that I am able to control the Crystal Tower. If we were able to gain an understanding of the technology by which the Allegans were able to accomplish this transference, perhaps then we could keep mind and soul together. Imagine, if you will, a device like unto a soul crystal, replete not only with our worldly memories, but also the bountiful energies of the soul. That is our current avenue of investigation, and we will follow it wheresoever it leads. 
While we are thus engaged, I think it best that Kaylee return to the source and inform Kryle and the others of our findings. Agreed. I imagine Tataru will be relieved to hear we've made progress of a sort. Then I beg leave reply Then I would beg leave to relay our findings unto Thancred and Reen, and to assist where I may in their investigation of the empty. Yes, please do. Should we have need of your counsel, we will not hesitate to summon you. Mm. That's the noise he makes when he bows like that. Give her regards to Tataru, won't you? Tataru. Tataru? Alright, speak with the Crystal Luxark in the orbit. All right. There's no one to talk to here, so I'm going back to Tatru, probably in, um, let's find out. Map. Mordona. All right, Rising Stones. Cool. Revan's Hole, here we come. Let's see. But yeah, with the sale, I did a thing and bought the dark level skip so I can do the roll quest without having to tank for real live people, because real live people... I feel that on a visceral level. I do. Ah, I hate people sometimes. Especially tanking for people. That's just the worst. To the Rising Stones! You're back! How did everything go in the first? Wait, don't tell me! Kryl will be here shortly, and she'll want to hear too. She's just tending to the others. Their bodies, I mean. Gods, I don't think I'll ever get used to saying that. Anyway, you can tell us everything the moment she gets here. Upon p speaking to Tataru, several cutscenes will play in sequence. It is recommended that you set aside sufficient time to view these scenes in their entirety. I'm here for it. Wait for Kryl's return? Yes. Sorry to keep you waiting. I've carried out the treatment as per Master Matoya's instructions. It should slow the destabilization of their corporeal ether quite significantly. But tell me, how fair are friends in the first? Explanation. Is the volume okay for the voices? So this Becklug's the first to lead an authority on Sawcraft, are they? Sounds promising. And Urianger's proffered solution of white orosite is rather ingenious now that I think of it. Hi, well, Bound. While they press on with their preparations, you may rest assured we will continue to do our part here. Oh, you're back. Estinian. Careful, Kana, don't jump him quite yet. And none the worse for wear, I see. Estinian! Oh, thank the gods! We've been worried sick. Did you lose your Link Pearl or something? The situation in Garlemald has become more complicated. I was making my escape from the capital when I ran into one of yours, Riol. He thought it best we come straight here. More complicated how? <laughs> Where to begin? 
After entering the Empire via Raz at Han, I went about my mission of investigating Black Rose. Um, the answer to that question, Kana, is yes. Embrace the power of and. It was then, inside a provincial factory, that I encountered the one who styles himself Shadow Hunter. Gaius Baelsar. Our goals being apparently aligned, we joined forces and ventured on into the heart of the capital, to the very Imperial Palace itself. There, we found a man whom all assumed dead. But his soul lives on, and he has rested back his flesh. Xenos Ye Galvas. Nor did the surprises end there, for no sooner had we arrived than he murdered his sire in cold blood. The Emperor is dead. This sent Gaius into a rage, and he charged in, blade drawn. What's wrong? seen him in action, his body at least. You will not best him alone. Nay, death will not come easy to that thing. If you would join me, then by all means. For what good it will do. The Black Wolf and the Azure Dragoon. I suppose this might suffice. Motherfucker at another motherfucker. Ah, the simplest pleasure of one's own flesh. Truly. There is no place like home. Abomination. Whatever he is, Kaylee was barely a match for him. If we stay here much longer... Emperor Varus, your radiance, are you alright? We may wear out our welcome. Irradiance? No! <sighs> Must even the most middling of sport be spoiled? The world conspires to bore me. But I have no cause to remain. I leave these vermin to you. Xenos! Any bright ideas? Just one. Nice 
damn shot. Your radiance. The intruders have taken flight. I repeat, the intruders have taken flight. Deploy all Magitek armor. We cannot let them escape. Take the red one. Or you could just kill them both. Good job, guys. Uh oh. Suggest we split up, okay. What did I win? What kind of giant freak off robot did I win? Well, well, someone's been busy. Oh! Ooh! Oh! Arc Ultima. And you would bar my way, would you? So be it. Come, Nidhogg, lend me your str- Didn't you learn your lesson last time with Nidhogg? Really? See what he's got. Alamorn, Drakenlance, Horrid Roar, uh, Star Diver, and Dragon Shadow Dive. Okay. This will be fun.
sorry for not actually talking during that fight, because uh, the powers that Justinian was using were on shift one through five, and shift and my push to talk key do not get along. Garleans and their machina. Now, where are you, Gaius? That was kind of fun. Yeah, Kral saw it too. Are you all right? Peer into my past, did you? Explanation. Well, I didn't quite relive the experience as you did, but I bore witness to it all. I'm still not sure what I think of this gift of yours, but no matter. Our confrontation was cut short when the Imperial Guard arrived. It was then that Xenos took his leave, citing boredom. <laughs> boredom. That is 100% Xenos. To think their research into the Echo could bear such fruit. Escaping death, jumping from one body to the next, and returning to his own after all this time. He is an Asian in all but name. It beggars belief, I, But no more than hero traversing the rift between worlds. My concerns are far more prosaic. With the Emperor dead and the Crown Prince missing, the Empire is in disarray. Until order is restored, assuming it even possible, we needn't fear an Imperial reprisal. And for reasons of his own, Xenos took it upon himself to rid the world of Black Rose. What? Riol has already gone to apprise the Alliance leaders of these developments. We may leave the matter in their hands for now. Then perhaps we have seen the last of the fighting at Gimlet. Though, if it comes to civil war, I cannot help but fear for the provinces. I'd nearly forgotten to ask. What became of Gaius? Did he not escape with you? That he did. But we parted ways shortly after leaving Garlemald. He claimed another threat had arisen which demanded his attention. He didn't elaborate, but the absence of some device or other in the capital gave him reason to believe they're planning something. Lest you worry. I believe he has well and truly shed the Black Wolf's pelt. Conquest is no longer his objective. We may safely leave him to his own devices. Okay. Well, it's nice to have one less foe to worry about, even if we do have a mysterious new threat to look out for instead. Speaking of which, I'll see that Riol and Al Shinobi are made aware. Though we still know next to nothing, it can't hurt to be vigilant. Well then, with Black Rose nipped in the bud, I believe I've fulfilled my part of the bargain. That's true, but with the Archon still slumbering away, we were hoping you might agree to stay with us for a little bit longer.
Sorry, but I'm not inclined to extend my contract. Gaius isn't the only one with business to attend to. Thank you for your help then, Estinian. I see why Alphano admires you so. <laughs> Farewell, my friend. See that you don't make a habit of dozing off in battle. You are not wrong, Kana. Hmm. I suppose we should all be getting on then. As ever, we will see to the Archon's needs. In the meantime, why not get some rest? You've more than earned it. Go on. And yes, I'm contractually obligated to nod whenever my character nods. You must be shattered after all that hopping back and forth between worlds. Why not stay here and rest for a while? I'm sure Beck Lug can manage without you. They've got enough science to help them if you ask me. Alright, let's see here. Meanwhile, in Garlemald. Traitors! You would dare deny Lord Nerva the throne? See, Nerva has a special place in my heart because it's the name of the archipelago and city of heroes. Well, city of villains. Ah! Or, I'm sorry, no. There we go. Onward! Before this day is done, victory shall be ours! Do you think? I find it amusing. Like dogs herding cattle to the slaughterhouse. Illidibus. That you, your soul is... Who are you? I could tell from the jacket. Before your majesty, I am but another dog, lost in want of a new master. A hunting dog, if you should wish it so. For I know full well the prey you would seek next. Zodiac. Meanwhile, in Yulmore, in the first. Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice. Did you hear? The mayor's reopening Daedalus Stoneworks, and they're looking for laborers. There's talk of resettling some of the old abandoned villages, too. They're even laying on free tallows to help anyone willing to make the move. Free Talos. Ha, <laughs> we'd best get packing. 
Steady work, board, and lodging? If that's not a recipe for hope, I don't know what is. Hope. Yes. So long as I yet live, I would see that feeble flame rekindled. That's... not Ardvert. It is my destiny to see our dream fulfilled. Okay, then. Alright. Kryle is glad for your return, though it remains to be seen if she's glad tidings to sh if she has glad tidings to share. Now I believe this is actually 5.2. Kaylee, my, what a pleasant surprise. If you've come to inquire after the Archons, fear not. Excuse me. Master Matoya's treatment has proven effective in stabilizing their corporeal ether. We mustn't grow complacent, however. Potent though these magics may be, they are not without limits. We can only hope they afford us enough time for the Crystal Exarch to complete his work. If only we could go with you to the first and help. Pardon the interruption, but I come bearing urgent news. Hey, Maxima. Ah, Kaylee, it has been far too long, my friend. Forgive me, I don't believe we've been formally introduced. And forgive the yawn there. Maxima, former Garlean ambassador. I remain here in Aeosia under the auspices of Commander Al Alden, offering what counsel I can in hopes of resolving the present conflict with the Empire. Ah, yes. I have heard stories of a defector from Garlemald, but never mind that. You said you have urgent news? Um, can I... I think it's a, a actual uh, Twitch-wide thing, it might be. Because uh, I was having that happen to me uh, earlier tonight, all night long, no matter what channel I was on. Um, let me actually check... Uh, Let me check and see how uh, it's going on my feed. No, okay, my feed is actually going pretty decently uh, caught up, but um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's been weird. I I had to constantly refresh Pound's stream. I had to constantly refresh uh, Black Widow Geek stream after he raided her. Um, I had to constantly refresh Rioting Rui's stream when I was watching her beforehand. Um, I don't know what the hell's going on, but uh, yeah, it it's weird. It's real weird. Uh, Indeed, as you may have heard, the Imperial capital is in turmoil, and a sizable portion of the Garlean forces have been recalled from the Gimlet Dark. With their numbers so greatly diminished, the main host of the Alliance is withdrawn, leaving the Alamegan Resistance to keep watch over the border. And it is there we have welcomed a most unexpected visitor who claims that this de-escalation may belie growing danger and unforeseen threats. Commander Aldin has arranged for an impromptu meeting to discuss these revelations. He's also requested a representative of the Scions attend as well, though it was clear to whom he wished to extend it, this inv invitation. It would seem time is of the essence. Well, you'll not be attending this meeting alone, though I am not a well-versed in the affairs of city-states as our comrades. I see no reason to burden a single Scion with all of this. 
Yes, of course. Then we must make for the Alamegan Quarter with all haste. Excuse me, my god. Time for more, uh, or less blood in my caffeine stream. Well, what are you waiting for? Get going, you two! Mm. Quest accepted! Alright, off to the Alamegan Quarter in Girabanya. Real quick, um, while I am uh, in a quick little uh, intermission here, I want to send a shout out to Pound of Flesh. Uh, he is, uh, and I, I shout him out every damn stream, but uh, I co host a stream with him from 6 p.m. to midnight Pacific. Uh, there, there were uh, just a, a crap ton of technical difficulties on tonight's stream, but uh, he made it work. Uh, we he he had some fun, and um, it uh, it worked out at the end. And um, there, it was a lot of fun. And uh, hopefully, they get the uh, um, hot fix in on Dead by Daylight uh, by tomorrow, so that uh, Pound can actually play the game again because unfortunately uh right now it's unplayable for him he's uh red green colorblind and uh they futzed around with the uh auras so he can't actually see the generators and the hooks and the survivors on um uh freaking uh maps as a killer right now uh he is a dead by daylight streamer primarily and he is also a published author but um if you'd like uh please go over and give him a follow if you uh uh haven't yet already if you're on youtube or whatnot um he will be starting a youtube channel in the near future i believe um but for right now uh that's pound of flesh with a zero for the o and of on twitch uh go over give him a follow there um and uh yeah, he's he's fantastic. He's uh, one of my best friends, and uh, I I love co-hosting the stream with him. Um, Maxima is such a tall boy. I keep expecting to see pointy ears on him, but no, he's just extra long flavor garlian. Yes. All right, where are we headed here? That away, and I can actually fly here. So, on to the flying. Uh, curl and right about there maxima and I hit the button before reading but that's okay hey all right They're here, Commander. And I, for one, am grateful that they are. Told you've been busy since our paths last crossed at the Gimlet Dark. Not that I understand half of it. When the science spoke of other worlds, I'd struggle to describe what I pictured. Mayhap things would seem clearer were I to hear the tale from your own lips. Well, I'm afraid the situation will not afford us that luxury. I trust you two require no introduction. We meet again, hero of Eorzea. Must we repeat this ridiculous display? I pose no threat to you, though what I come to warn you of very well might. Had he meant to do us harm, I hazard he would have kept to the shadows and brought more than two companions. We need not pretend to be the best of friends. 
But I hope we can put aside our differences for the present. As you are doubtless aware, Sir Estinian and I cooperated to rid the world of Black Rose in your absence. Our journey together took us as far as the Imperial Palace, where we witnessed Emperor Varus meet his death at Xenos' hand. By the way... <clears throat> I should not have coughed into my hand. That's okay, though. I will go wash it after I'm done with the stream. Anyway, um, Black Rose is a uh, very potent nerve gas that kills pretty much anyone that breathes it in. That is what Black Rose is, and that's what they're talking about. Being the sole witnesses to this crime, and in no position to defend our innocence, we were then forced to flee, each pursuing his own avenue of escape. When we were later reunited... Estinian claimed to have encountered an unfamiliar kind of machina during his flight, but to me his description seemed anything but, and upon further investigation I found that I was right. The Empire is developing a new Ultima weapon. What, that Alagon monstrosity, created to vanquish primals? with which you yourself once thought to conquer Eorzea. The same. In my foolishness, I sought to harness its power, and became the Asian's pawn in so doing. But you know as well as I how that tale ended. Fuck, 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 fuck! Such destruction! The weapon itself, excavated from beneath this very city, was destroyed ere we could fully unravel its secrets, and that should have been the end of it. But unlikely as it sounds, the Empire's efforts to recreate it have somehow borne fruit, primarily through secret research conducted by the Seventh Imperial Legion, it would seem. Wait, the Seventh was all but annihilated at Cartano, along with its legatus. Indeed. Few survived. The Seventh, as it is now, has little in common with the Legion led by Vandanus, and its leadership has changed hands several times since. Precisely how this project has continued despite such turmoil, and under whose auspices, remains a mystery. What we do know, however, is that a number of prototypes have been produced, and that one of them is on its way to Eorzea. We attempted to stop it, but it was all we could do to slow its progress, so we resolved instead to bring you warning. And right glad are we that you did, though it soundly dashed our hopes that tensions might ease at last. As it is, we've begun to strengthen our presence in the Gimlet Dark and are assembling a force to meet the coming threat. A force with you in its vanguard, I hope. Before you say anything, I know full well you have pressing concerns of your own. Your comrades remain in peril, and I would not ask you to forsake them. But the fact remains that you and you alone have faced the Ultima weapon and emerged victorious. We need you. And so, when the time comes, if your comrades can spare you, I bid you lend us your strength. I've assigned an officer to await your word. Alrighty. The Asian's downfall was to be the work of my remaining days, but it was my hand that kindled these flames and I cannot allow them to spread any further. I will do what I must to see this mistake consigned to history once and for all. Even if it means begging your aid. The fates will enjoy the irony, 
even as I endure the ignominy. I too shall make for the border and offer my skills, meager though they seem in such company. Mayhap we shall meet there anon. God, he is tall. Though we can ill afford to ignore the coming of a new Ultima weapon, our friend's plight grows ever more precarious, and none save you can join them in the first. I only hope you are not forced to make a choice. As ever, the way forward is paved with difficult decisions. We can ill afford to ignore the threat of the new Ultima weapon, but with each passing day, the plight of the Scions grows ever more perilous. If you cannot stay for a debriefing on the Ultima weapon, I will not stop you. I only ask that you confer with me before returning to the first. Is this the Ultima weapon? Yeah, Ruby Ruby weapon, okay. I see. Screw that. Alright, so. Like I've said many, many times before, I'm a disabled gamer, and I have fibromyalgia and arthritis and uh, a whole host of other things that uh, prevent me from basically uh, playing at full capacity that uh, normal, uh, well, not normal, but uh, non-disabled gamers would play at uh so excuse me um i hate trials in this game trials are uh single enemy um big fights with lots and lots and lots of mechanics that you have to uh make sure you uh do all the right moves for and crap like that uh eight person fights generally um and I suck out loud at them. I just suck out loud at them, and uh, it's mostly because I'm um, my fingers are uh, not really working at full capacity, and I can't really uh, move and hit the damn buttons at the same time, and I can't do openers, or uh, if I'm playing a healer, I can't actually, uh, you know. I, I have trouble hitting um, the buttons to target teammates that are not the first four or whatever. Uh, tanking, not too, too bad, but it's still not my strong suit. And um, yeah, uh, I hate trials and I don't do them if I don't have to. So Ruby Weapon can uh, go do itself. Um, I am going to continue with the, uh, the way home here. Let's see. Kryle can see the steely resolve in your eyes and suspect she knows where duty calls you. Yep. I take it you're ready to return to the first. Then I would ask that you apprise the others of the recent events here in the source, namely Xenos' return and the development of a new Ultima weapon. As for their bodies, you may assure them Master Matoya and I will continue doing what we can to keep their corporeal ether stable. Safe travels, Kaylee. I hope to see you and the other Scions soon. Okay, so back to Crystal Exarc in the Ocular at the Crystarium.
I love the rain, even if it's just in video games. Hey! Hi, Kana! Yes, I do have business with the Crystal X Arc. You've come at a most opportune time, my friend. I've made something of a breakthrough in my research on the soul, and a means to return the science home. I trust you two have been making good use of your time? Explanation. Ill tidings from the source, you say? And I will summon the others that we might be all be appraised of the situation. Now that we are all here, what news from the source? Explanation. The ceiling knows. A new Ultima weapon. We must count ourselves lucky that Gaius has pledged his assistance. While this is indeed a worrying development, I think the state of the Empire as a whole greater grounds for concern. With the Emperor slain and Xenos returned, it is impossible to predict how matters will unfold in Garlemald. The Ultima weapon may be but the first of many unpleasant surprises. The situation beareth closer observation, of that there is no doubt, and doth compound our need to return unto the Source. Then let us address that issue. Our long search for a means to see you safely home may well be nearing its conclusion. Thanks in large part to Urianje and Beklug's invaluable insight, we have succeeded in fashioning a vessel for the journey. All right. We set out to create a crystalline container retaining the more useful properties of white auracite, but without its regrettable limitations. And, after a good deal of trial and error, we made one. <laughs> Just put that in you. An arc for soul and mind both that will allow your incorporeal self in its entirety to be ferried between worlds. A spirit vessel, if you will. However... However... However? Though the vessel is possessed of the requisite qualities to hold mind and memory, it wanteth yet for a means to receive of them. For that, we must needs imbue it with the Exarch's innate gift. Oh my. A gift that lives on only through the blood of the Allegan Emperors, which certainly does not flow within Aurasite or any other crystal. Just so, milady. The blood serveth as a conduit of sorts. In its absence, memory cannot pass from mind unto mind, nor from flesh unto crystal. Wouldn't Astinian know about that? That being the case, we must either alter the process of inheritance so as to require no such thing, or determine a means by which my blood may permeate the vessel. I am hopeful that the records found within this tower will yield the knowledge we require to pursue one or the other of these avenues. As well you should be. The Allegan's body of etherological research is extraordinary. I can scarce believe it the work of ages past. 
but its underlying principles are not so very different from those of my own field of study. Given time, we will find the answers we seek. I know that you can ill afford to wait, and it pains me that I must ask you to do so. I can only reaffirm my promise to you that a solution will be found. Whatever it takes, I will see you safely home. My apologies. I do hope you haven't come to tell us that mortal peril fast approaches. No. I had hoped to speak with the Warrior of Darkness. I love Lena. But there is no need to cut short your meeting on my account. I will be waiting outside. Why not speak in here? She knows I don't mind. Unless... she didn't want to. Perhaps I might accompany you. Though I am woefully ill-qualified to assist in the Exarch's research, I may yet be of some use to Lena. Alright, let's see here. Rare roast beef. Uh, directed the Vite Determination, Skill Speed, Vitality, Direct Hit Rate. There we go. Quest complete! Oh, Alpha Node. Okay, hello, Alpha Node. Alpha Node is eager to assist Captain Lena. I must confess, while I enjoy my fair share of scholarly research, it would be good to step outside for a spot of fresh air. Now then, shall we go and speak with Lena? This weather. We have little time, so I will be brief. A sin eater has been sighted in Lakeland, and I ask for your assistance in slaying it. A sin eater? I had heard some few yet remained and after the night had returned, but perhaps we should call the others. That will not be necessary. It is only a single sin eater. A simple task for our guard, I should think. That said, I believe fighting alongside the Warrior of Darkness would be a valuable experience for them. Peace can lead to complacency, and they gain nothing from an easy victory. But you do not underestimate your foes, however harmless they may seem. My men would do well to learn from your example. Let's be about it, then. Excellent. Then let us make for Fort Job. It's kind of a Icelandic Nordic accent. All right, to Fort Job. If you would wait here a moment, I will gather the others. You may not remember, but you have met these soldiers once before, though only in passing. They long have they awaited the opportunity to fight at your sight. I was at death's door the, uh, that day after the Sin Eaters attacked. If you and yours hadn't come along, I'd likely step through, and I wouldn't have been alone. Your courage and selflessness is something we all aspire to. 
I too was there that terrible day. My friend was transformed into a Sin Eater before my very eyes, and I had no choice but to cut her down. The thought of returning to the field, of holding a blade again, it filled me with dread. But that's no way to honor her on or my comrades. And so I have returned. I swear I will not let you or anyone else down from this day forward. A pleasure to meet you, miss. Truly. It seems like only yesterday I watched as you took fight, fly to Strida Namaro to go save the Oracle. Strange to think the Yule Moor and soldiers we once locked blades with are now on our side, but we will do our utmost to keep the peace here in Lakeland. We seem to be missing one. Uh oh. My apologies, Captain Lena. An elderly gentleman asked that I escort him to Clear Melt. It took longer than I anticipated. I'll not begrudge your desire to help those in need, but a soldier must be punctual, especially when we play host to honored guests. It won't happen again. The name's Thaler. I'm sure you don't remember, but we went me but we met once before in the infirmary. I was at, I asked you to deliver a message to the Exarch and the Warrior of Darkness. Little did I know, I was already talking to her. Don't give up, don't give in. I keep those words close to my heart, and the boundless, beautiful skies above serve as a reminder of their importance. My friend got to see the knights return shortly before he passed. He left this world with a smile, satisfied with a glimpse of what was to come. But there are countless others who weren't so fortunate. They gave their lives for the promise of a future they'll never know. So it falls to us to do everything we can to fulfill that promise. No matter what happens, we won't give up. We won't give in. Your heroism has inspired all our guardsmen in much the same manner. Our scouts at the northern staging point have had have not had the pleasure of meeting you in person. Let's not keep them waiting. like they got the Sin Eater. Did you slay this Eater? Your orders were to await the main force before engaging. No, Captain. It wasn't us, I swear it. A man came out of nowhere and cut it down before we knew what was happening. By himself? Certainly it is no light warden, but nevertheless. It's true. Felled it with a single swing of his axe he did. I've never seen anything like it. So I says axe. to him, who are you, the warrior of bleeding darkness? And he says, no, I'm a warrior of light. And that was it. Buggered off as quick as he came. A warrior of light? Why would someone go around calling himself that, though? It was those bastards who caused the flood. I mean, if you were going to pretend to be anyone, it'd be her. The Warrior of Darkness. Hey? Oh, oh, I didn't know. It's an honor.
Since the Eater is no longer a threat, our work here is done. Return to your posts. Ah. Whoops. Accidental button push. I apologize for the wasted journey. It seems I overestimated the threat. As for this warrior of light, I do not know who would be brazen enough to take that mantle for his own. Whatever it may once have meant, it is forever tainted by the association with the Flood. The Exarch told me the truth of Ardbert and his comrades' deeds, and I am aware they played some part in your own triumph. But to most, they are synonymous with the calamity that befell this world. Still. If this man is minded to destroy Sin Eaters, I may forgive him his unfortunate choice of alias. But that is neither here nor there. I thank you for accompanying me. With that concluded, shall we return to the Crystarium? There is a proposal I should like to make. Forgive me. There is one more thing. Okay. A personal concern of mine. I had hoped you might have a moment to speak privately. Take your time. I shall go on ahead. Not mince words. This matter concerns the Exarch. Though his countenance belies his age, his demeanor never has. He has seen more than any man should and grown ever more weary with time. But I see I give the wrong impression. While it is true he attempted to open a letter with a salmon fillet the other evening, we are not here because I suspect his mind is deteriorating. Nor do I believe him to be so maddeningly unconcerned by the prospect of his own death as he once was. Indeed, the opposite is true. It is for this reason that I seek your advice. Since he returned from the Tempest, the Exarch is not as he was. He seems a different man, a younger man. I know not the details of his research, but when I saw him at work recently, there was a glint in his eye that I had never seen before. He looked happy. Aww. It was as if he had peered into the future and for the first time found joy there. Though it gladdens me to see him thus, I wonder if I should not keep my distance. I fear that my presence will only anchor him to the past. Remind him of all the pain that came before. Aww, Lena. Are you sure? Then perhaps we might remain as we were. As we have always been. What a relief. What a relief. In that case, I will have to speak with him about the amount of time he is spending at work. <laughs> this research is important, I know. But if he refuses to consider his own health, I will have to consider it for him. Quest complete. Her mind at ease, Lena is ready to return to her duties. I will not keep you. You and your comrades have much to discuss. 
I will see the others back to their posts. Back to the Crystaria. I was way down here, wasn't I? That's no good. The others were quite shocked to hear of what we found in Lakeland. But now that you're here, there's a proposal I should like to make. I've been spending a great deal of time in the Cabinet of Curiosity, and of late I have noted more and more people perusing books on history, the years leading up to the Flood in particular. I suspect they wish to know more about the Warriors of Light, as well they should but nearly everything I've come across describes them as Sin Eaters or worse. Regardless of whether or not this warrior of light is who they claim to be, I worry that their sudden appearance in conjunction with this renewed interest in their predecessors may lead to growing unrest and fear. If the people of the Crystarium seek the truth, I say we give it to them. I too can attest to the falsehoods found within full many of the cabinet's tomes, with nary a mention of the noble deeds of Ardbert and his comrades. To be fair, they bear some responsibility for the Flood, but when the tale is told again and again over the course of a century, I am not surprised to see their roles distorted and them painted as villains. Were it not for the records stored within the Crystal Tower, I would have had no reason to question the narrative. Unfortunately, that knowledge was of no use, for when I arrived here in the first, their reputation had already been irreparably tarnished. That said, there still remain those who worked tirelessly to defend their good name in the early days following the Flood. Considering all the good they had done, I find, uh, I find it a wonder they needed defending it all. They brought to justice the men who misused my knowledge to bring about the fall of Robert. That such heroes could be spoken of in the same breath as Sin Eaters is absurd. Under normal circumstances, I would agree, but as time passed, those who knew firsthand of their deeds dwindled. In the end, only one truth remained, that they were the cause of the Flood. With the world on the brink of oblivion, it was all too easy for the Warriors of Light to become villains, deserving only of resentment and hate. At that point, the truth mattered little. It would not change their lot. Thanks to all of you, however, their lot has changed, and now they may heed the long-forgotten truth. You claimed it was Ardbert who helped you overcome him itself, correct? Such a revelation would only would do well to sway the hearts of those who know him only as a villain. I have shared this with the select few, but one and all must be told of his sacrifice. To that end, I say we proceed with Alphanode's plan. We call together the people of the Crystarium and, to, and recount to them the true tale of the Warriors of Light and the flood that followed in their wake. Well, what say you, Kaylee? Spread the word, I say, or I wish we had done this sooner. Spread the word, I say. Then we're all of one mind on the matter. Good. 
Hexar, might I ask you to continue working with Beglug on our means of returning home? The rest of us will see to gathering the people of the Crystarium and the Excedra. We have to reach out to anyone and everyone who might be willing to lend an ear. With any luck, word will spread and more will accompany them. Quick, is there a story dungeon that goes with this patch? Yes, there is. Okay. To what do I owe the pleasure? Whatever it is, I must ask you to be brief. With the night return, visitors have been flocking to the Crystarium, and I find myself too busy by half. I don't mind it, though. Seeing the stairs so full of life and excitement, one can almost forget the flood ever happened. The truth about the Warriors of Light. But you already told me all there is to know. Didn't you? Well, if there's more to their story, I'd love to hear it. Maybe then I can compete with Sayella and the regaling patrons of their stories with their heroism. Maybe I'll even inspire a few aspiring adventurers. Anamnesis Aniter. Alright, and that's a story dungeon and not just a, uh, uh, random dungeon? Wears in the market, have you? Well, I can guarantee you'll have no trouble finding what you need, whatever it may be. Under Yule Moore's new leadership, trade has never been more prosperous. Word is that, word is that fellow from Daedalus Stoneworks has taken over as mayor. Did he really? Little wonder business is booming the way it is. I imagine it won't be long before all of Norvrant reaps the benefits. But you've not come to talk about the market. Something on your mind? God damn it. Accidental button push. Oh well. Herb, thank you so much for the host. Kaga thanks you as well. Just playing a little Final Fantasy XIV right now. Um, going through the 5.2 patch. So that I will be all set for the 5.3 patch when it comes out on uh, August the 11th. How's it going? Uh, hold on just a second. Do, 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 do. Herb just got partner with Twitch. So big congrats to Herb. Huge congrats, actually. And um, my goodness, uh, 
that is a uh, an achievement in and of itself. My goodness, that is huge. So congratulations again on that, Herb. Uh, totally, totally well earned. Uh, totally, um, absolutely, uh, uh, not well earned, but uh, totally um, necessary, actually, because you are one of the best streamers that I have ever seen. You, you've done uh, video game streams, you've done um, cooking streams, you have str you stream from your kitchen sometimes. It's, it's fantastic. You are a true variety streamer and I love watching your stuff. So, uh, I, I, I've known Herb for many, many years. Uh, he and I uh, met in City of Heroes a long, long time ago. Um, and I don't mean to say that to imply that we're old because we're not old. We're not old, but um, Herb is a uh, fantastic person um, and uh, couldn't happen to a better guy. So congratulations, Herb. And yes, Pound of Flesh, actually, um, uh, one of my good friends, uh, former dev of uh, COH. I, I don't know if it's okay that I can mention that, but uh, he, uh, he, he did work on the game a little bit. So... Um, it, I, well, not Dev. He, he he was community, but yes. Uh, I'll I'll leave it to you if you want to uh, say what your uh, name was, uh, in the community. But um, yeah. But uh, pound of flesh. Uh, Pound of Flesh, uh, one of my good friends, I co-host his stream 6 p.m. to uh, midnight uh, Pacific Time. Um, he is primarily a Dead by Daylight streamer and uh, uh, just one of my uh, one of my good friends. Really good guy as well. So, uh, yes, he was Arbiter Fabulous. Alright, where am I going here? I'm going to the Crystal Wooden uh, Cabin of Curiosity. That's where I'm going. Oh, hey, it's Mordiac. Yay. No, inside. Inside the doors. All the way up to the top. RB Fab. No, this can't be. Surely there's at least one book here that does not cast the Warriors of Light and their deeds in such a negative light. Hello? Yes, Morin. Oh, Kaylee, forgive me. The Cabinet of Curiosity has been bustling with visitors of late, but I fear our repository lacks the knowledge they seek. The people who wish to know the truth of the Flood, of the Warriors of Light. I have searched high and low, but alas, every account portrays them as no better than Sin Eaters, abominations worthy only of scorn and resentment. I know they were not always judged so harshly, yet I can find no proof, and I dare call myself a librarian. You would address the people and tell them the truth of the Warriors of Light? Of the Flood? How wonderful! You've regaled me with the tale once before, but I should love to hear it again. Oh, and you may be assured I will not come alone. Alright, where to next? Where's the door? That's the big question. There we go. Um, out this way and... Uh, I guess it would help if I had the map open. Alright. Through, okay, that door doesn't open. That that doesn't help me at all. Is this door open? No. I'm just going to use Peloton to give myself a little bit of a speed boost. The 
rookery? Anyone here? No? Okay. Um, I can't do much there, so I'm going to go up the stairs. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to actually go to the Ethernet shard, because this will get me up to the crystal and me. I... I know my way around this place a little. It's been a while. A long while. Alright, Catless. Well, well, what a coincidence. I was just reading over a letter I received from Grenholt not long ago. He says a visitor from the Crystarium found him at the bottom of the ocean and that she inspired him to reach new artistic heights. Well, I can only think of one person capable of both feats, though I'd say the latter is far more impressive. To think fate could bring the two of you together in such a place. I'm sorry, you mean the Exarch didn't tell us the whole story of the Warriors of Light? Well, whatever he's left unsaid, I'm all ears. Okay, and the last one is over this away. A lot of fake doors in this place. Not digging it. Okay, it's downstairs from here. So it's probably the, uh... Yeah, the infirmary. Chesamil. Kaylee! What? My, what a wonderful surprise! Though I hope your being here doesn't mean someone's been hurt. Thanks to you, I've had far fewer patients coming through my door of late. Which is a shame, come to think of it. I've had far fewer opportunities to test my new medicines. <laughs> I jest, of course. It's actually been quite pleasant to have a few moments to myself now and again. Explanation. The truth about the Warriors of Light, but the Exarch has already spoken with me about them. Well, if there's more to the tale, I'd much like to hear it. Okay, back to the docile gate. Which is actually just right there. Okay. Actually, no, Alpha Node's right there. Okay, cool. There you are. Between the four of us, I dare say we've swept the Crystarium from top to bottom. Now we need but wait for the people to gather. That's a lot of people. Yes, this looks to be nearly everyone. Let us begin, shall we? Turn the voices up for everyone. Though I am usually the first to hold forth at such events, I think on this occasion that honor should fall to you. Okay. They would be more inclined to take the word of the Warrior of Darkness. Indeed. In light of the subject matter, who better than thee to speak these truths? Darkness doesn't actually have a voice. of light did all that? So they never... I mean, they only ever wanted to help. 
Uh, and when everything they'd done turned to ash, they still carried on. Rioting Ruin, really hello. To stop the flood. First their lives, then their souls. Do 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 do. Riding Rui, one of my uh, favorite new people that I've met. Uh, she is a Dead by Daylight streamer, and uh, she is awesome. Go over, give her a uh, quick follow if uh, you haven't already. Uh, she's just a great person. And they managed it too. In the end, they saved us, and we. Curse their names. This should go a long way towards clearing the air. Let's hope so, Alphanor. Oh my. That isn't supposed to happen. Impossible. I definitely see something. You don't think it's a ghost, do you? A g -g 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 ghost Nay, yonder standeth no bloodless apparition, but a warrior of light and darkness both. Ardbert. White Zoiks. What in the world? It's you! The one who slew the Eater! That it should be the warrior of darkness who brought the truth to light. You've saved me a fair bit of time. Though I have a few words of my own to say, if I may. Uh-oh. People of the Crystarium! I am Ardbert, one of those you know as a warrior of light. I don't trust That's him. That's impossible. You should be dead. Aye, that I should. But as the world has been given you life, so too have I. Yes, his name is Ardbert. I know not why I, and I alone, have been gifted this chance. But I do know this. Only by the will of the star itself could such a miracle come to pass. The hero who stands before you now, the warrior of darkness, is not of this world. And the day will come when she must return to her home. But this land is our home. And if it is to remain so, now and forevermore, it is we who must protect it. The time to rely on saviors from afar has passed. It is you who must rise. You who must become the new warriors of light. What? Us? Warriors of Light? Uh... <laughs> None of us were born heroes, my friend. I was only ever a man with a thirst for adventure. But wherever my journeys took me, 
I was invariably confronted with the same choice. To lend what aid I could to those in need, or not. And I always chose the former. Any one of you could do the same. All you need is the will to help your fellow man, and the resolve to see it through. From thine own lips did we learn of Ardbert's fate, and by thy countenance I gather thou art not inclined to recant thy testimony. Yet whosoever this man may be, his words hold truth and resonate with the citizenry besides. For us to voice our doubts here and now would serve but to sow disquiet. Twere better we retired unto the ocular and there discuss this matter in private. Yeah. Go. I will stay here and watch. For those just joining, um, I am contractually obligated to nod anytime my character nods. It's... It's just part of the game. So this is weird. So, that is a Warrior of Light of the First. I've not had the pleasure of making his acquaintance, but as you all seem to be in agreement, I gather this is no simple case of mistaken identity. <laughs> as far as I was able to discern, that was indeed Artbert. It has been a long time, but not that long. Could he truly have been resurrected as he claims? Yeah, this game is extremely pretty, but the plot gets really convoluted and it gets really deep. But the whole game is a love letter to the entire Final Fantasy series. And uh, the latest expansion, which I'm playing right now, is... Uh, Probably the best written Final Fantasy since my favorite Final Fantasy and my favorite video game of all time, Final Fantasy VI. Ardbert did entrust his very soul unto thee. I see no reason to question thy judgment. Nor I. To my eyes, your ether burns as brightly as the day you slew Emmett Selk. That is proof that he is with you still. Yet that which standeth now before the people is far more than a passing imitation. I am reminded of the cardinal virtues, though a sin eater he is not. Which leaveth but one plausible explanation. that he is an Asian. Given their fondness for posthumous possession, I would have to agree. From what I understand, the Warriors of Light were laid to rest in Yulmor by those whom they had aided in life. At the time, some few still remembered them as heroes. Needless to say, four of them were subsequently exhumed to serve as the virtues. And if one knew where to look, Ardbert too would not have been difficult to find. Assuming then that this is indeed the work of an Asian, my mind inevitably turns to the last remaining paragon to survive the Sundering. Elidibus. Elidibus. See, Uriange said it better than I did. That Xenos hath reclaimed his own flesh is known. Thus, evicted from his borrowed form and cognizant no doubt of Emmet Selk's failure here in the first, 
It is quite possible the Emissary chose Ardbert for his next vessel. Inhabiting the flesh of the Fallen? Why, that is unsavory. And they do this often, you say? Verily, for they possess no corporeal forms of their own. In what one may term their natural state, none save those gifted with the Echo can perceive them. Indeed, when Elidibus intruded upon the Waking Sands, his presence did go unmarked by all save Ninfilia and the Warrior of Light. His, uh, his dress is... Uh some of the artifact gear i believe for um one of the uh jobs in the game called astrologian which is a uh healer that uses um uh tarot card type things so uh i don't think it's that particular dress but um something similar to it is in the game for uh uh male and female characters On that occasion, I myself remained ignorant of his coming until after his departure. It was only at a later juncture, when he deigned to appear before me in borrowed flesh, that I was finally able to take the measure of him. In such puppetry do the Asians engage when they seek to influence the course of history. And they have gained much by it. Emmet Selk single-handedly built the Garlean Empire in this manner, while La Hebrea came close to conquering Eorzea, having taken possession of Thancred's living body. Yet it must needs be noted that the Asians cannot avail themselves of all mortal vessels. For were they able to do so, none would serve as a better pawn than our own redoubtable champion. Mayhap the blessing of light shieldeth Hydelin's chosen from Asian influence. Or mayhap other forces are at work. We cannot say for certain. Maybe, not mayhap. Whatever the reason, I hope it holds true. I dare not contemplate what might come to pass otherwise. Is it not peculiar then that Arbert's mortal remains should be susceptible? given that he was once a warrior of light? Or did the final departure of his soul make it possible, perhaps? Regardless, to hear an Asian use him to call forth new warriors of light boggles the mind. Elidibus hath ever been an enigma, his ostensible purpose being to preserve the balance between light and dark. When he made overtures towards me, however, I was afforded a glimpse behind the mask of the self-appointed emissary. I shall not defend mine actions, undertaken in pursuit of a better understanding of our foe as either wise or prudent. Nevertheless, what little I did glean may now prove useful. Ariane Really? Elidibus possesseth a subtle mind, practiced in the art of manipulation. That he coax this star's most valiant heroes as far as the source with naught save half-truths is no trifling feat. And now, I believe, he doth employ his skills once more to some as yet unknown end. Though naught is certain, should my suspicions prove true, we shall have need of all our wits if we are to uncover, and thereafter thwart, his plot. Agreed. Tis plain that simply speaking out against him will not avail us. At best, it would only serve to confuse the people. And I would hesitate to do anything which might tarnish Ardbert's reputation once more, nor yours by association. That being the case, it may be wise to keep a covert eye on this Ardbert's movements. 
as we attempt to discern his purpose and how best to mitigate his influence. His performance appears to have concluded. What now? Go back out and follow him? It would appear Master Alfino already hath pursuit in mind, and I suspect one pair of eyes shall better serve our cause than half a dozen. Let the rest of us maintain an inconspicuous distance, for the present at least. Alrighty. Actually, you know what? It's coming up on uh, the two-hour mark right now. Uh, I kind of have a soft limit of about two hours per stream. Um, I uh, I kind of am in a lot of pain right now, so uh, I do need to go grab uh, my pain meds. Uh, so on that note, I want to thank uh, Pound of Flesh. I want to thank Urban Bohemian. I want to thank uh, Rioting Rui. I want to thank... Um, uh, uh, Kana for being here, and, uh, yeah, thank you all so much for, uh, coming, for coming to the stream and watching. I want to thank everyone who, uh, may watch on YouTube. Um, let's, uh, zoop zoop. Let's go back here. Um, so, uh, once again, new Twitter, uh, way the number two late TV. Uh, you can find, uh, stream announcements on there. Um, new Twitch handle, uh, which is, uh, twitch.tv slash way too late TV. Um, thank you so much, uh, Herb for, uh, the host and for sh showing up. Um, congratulations once again on partner. Totally deserved. Totally deserved. Um, and, uh, I will be back next time. I'm Sam. This has been way too late. Uh, hopefully I'll be back tomorrow again at 2 a.m. Pacific to finish out 5.2. Uh, maybe play a little Dead by Daylight afterward, uh, assuming that they get that hot fix in. Um, and uh, until then, take care of my night owls. I'll be back next time. Good night, everybody. <laughs>